you have a clean Windows 11 25H2 system that is configured and ready to be used as a baseline gold image template. However, when you go to run SysPrep, you are presented with an error stating that SysPrep was not able to validate your Windows installation. This is the general default error dialog that appears whenever SysPrep runs into an issue. Luckily, these are typically easy to fix if the error immediately appears when SysPrep is invoked. To be clear, the purpose of SysPrep is to prepare a clean, prepared, configured system for image creation. Log in as a user with local administrative rights. Right-click Start and Open System. Ensure the computer is in work group and not domain or MDM joined. Click Windows Update and ensure the system is fully up to date. Click System, Storage, Advanced Storage Settings, Disks and Volumes. Ensure there are no other drives or volumes connected other than the operating system drive. You can verify using Disk Management. Remove all USB devices except for essential human interface devices and verify with Device Manager. Remove all other local accounts. First, enable the Local Administrator account, if not already enabled. Open an Administrative PowerShell Terminal. Use the get local user commandlet to determine the account status. Enable the account and set the password. Take care when typing a new password as there is no type again validation. Double check the status using get local user again to verify it is now enabled. Log off and log in as the local administrator account. Right click Start, Open System, Account, Other Users. On the account to remove, click the drop down and click Remove. Delete account and data. If the dialog can't delete account appears because the user's already logged in, you can enforce the account off. Method one is to open Task Manager and select the Users tab. Right-click the user, select Sign Off, and click Sign Out User. Method two is to open an administrative PowerShell terminal. Type QUser to get the login ID of the logged in users, followed by Log Off. Now, you can remove the user account and data. In the administrative PowerShell terminal, check for any pending file renames and servicing and reboot as necessary to clear. If using a virtual machine to create the image, which I highly suggest, shut down and take a snapshot or checkpoint. You will thank me later if you run into major issues. Log in as the actual local administrator account and open an administrative PowerShell session. Run the SysPrep GUI. When preparing a baseline template to be deployed to diverse different platforms, either physical or virtual, you must generalize the image. Leave Enter System Out of Box Experience, OOBE, selected, choose Shutdown from the dropdown, and click OK. There's a high probability you'll experience the error dialog. There are typically four files in the Panther folder under C, Windows, System32, SysPrep. The files we are most interested in are setup.er.log and setup.act.log. Cat setup.er.log to view the contents. The file setup.act.log is verbose and contains all actions, including info level and errors. There, you will see the error that caused sysprep to fail. Both the setup.act.log and setup.er.log files are cumulative as each setup run appends to the logs. When viewing setup.er.log, all of the error entries start to run together, making it difficult to determine the latest cause. Split the terminal so you can follow the error during each sysprep run. Viewing the setup.act.log using the get-content commandlet and tailing the last 20 lines reduces the clutter and is much easier to read. The first line following an info entry typically provides actionable information. BitLocker will disrupt SysPrep, therefore we have to disable it. The get-bitlocker volume commandlet 
will tell us the status of the volume. Likewise, we can use the legacy manage-bde command. If the volume status shows encrypted, BitLocker is on, even if protected status is off. Use the disable-bitlocker commandlet or manage-bde to disable. Monitor progress with get-bitlocker volume. As the volume is being decrypted, it will reflect that status and the remaining percentage. Depending on many factors, this process can take a while. Once the volume status reflects fully decrypted, we are ready to proceed. Again, run sysprep. This time, we will pass the command parameters in the terminal. You may see the error dialog again. View setup at or setup error.log. Certain AppX packages that are installed for a single user and not provisioned for all users may cause sysprep to fail. To fix, remove the package using the remove app package commandlet specifying the all users parameter. If the logs cite a provisioned package, remove it using remove appx provisioned package. Run sysprep again. Depending on circumstances, you may need to remove several packages. Unfortunately, sysprep only identifies offending packages or other errors on a one per run basis. With BitLocker disabled, all offending AppX packages removed, and no pending updates, sysprep will proceed. During slash generalize, sysprep resets the system to OOBE, clears unique identifiers, including the machine SID, and removes hardware-specific configuration, preparing the image for deployment across diverse physical, virtual, and cloud platforms. Once sysprep has finished this process, it will automatically shut down the computer. Even if it appears the system is locked up, it is not. Please be patient and allow sysprep to complete. Do not interrupt the process or forcefully shut down. With the device shut down after sysprep, you are now ready to capture the Windows partition to a .wim file. The two primary Microsoft supported methods are DISM and the new dash Windows image commandlet. For physical devices, boot with a WinPE USB drive so the target OS volume is offline. It is important to note that drive letters may differ from C when booted into WinPE. For virtual machines, we can mount the .vhd or .vhdx disks in read-only mode to the host system or in another virtual machine. The default DISM and new dash Windows image usage only captures the Windows partition. The EFI, MSR, and recovery partitions get recreated during deployment. In a later video, I will cover DISM and new dash Windows image usage and syntax in detail, including full flash update FFU images. Take a VM snapshot or checkpoint before your first sysprep attempt. Virtualization helps tremendously since you can revert to the previous snapshot or checkpoint. It is important to note that if sysprep encounters an error immediately after invoking the command, you can take action to fix it. However, if sysprep is already running and encounters an error later in the process, you can confidently consider the device bricked. If this happens, the image is typically no longer usable. Don't try to resume, capture the logs, restore your checkpoint, and use the logs to help fix the root cause. However, if you have specialized OEM or IoT devices, such as a ruggedized tablet with custom internal hardware and drivers, running sysprep on that device removes hardware-specific configurations but does not purge the driver store, therefore making deployment to other identical devices easy. Signed in, Microsoft Store sessions and background apps updates can reintroduce AppX changes mid-build. Sign out of the store and pause store auto updates while crafting the image. Do not sysprep a domain joined or MDM enrolled device. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it helpful and informative. If you have feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please share them in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with others. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it.